It's one of the greatest brands in the world, Gatorade, sports theme, food and beverage drink. Uh, one of Pepsi's top selling brands in the world. Uh, we're now with John Shoemate, one of the uh, brand managers of Gatorade. Um, first off, I just introduced you guys as one of the best brands in the world. Do you believe it? Oh, absolutely, and uh, honored and uh, privileged to work for such a great brand at Gatorade. How exciting is that? You know, um, one of my clients, uh, uh, Bud Light, which I normally drink a Bud Light during the show for sponsorship, but tonight we yes. drink some Gatorade, man. Love it, love uh, so it. The show may not be as wacky because I'll be drinking Gatorade instead of beer, but um, definitely staying hydrated. That's a good thing. I will. I'll be. I'm about to feel like I run a marathon here. How exciting is it? Because I know a lot of guys that I deal with. They're very excited, and it gives them that team karate to work with one of the best brands in the world. It's like working with the New York Yankees, the Dallas Cowboys, the L.A. Dodgers, the biggest brands in the sports. What does it feel like for you? Oh, it's actually a dream come true. You know, I, you know coming out of college and coming out of grad school, never even thought uh, these types of opportunities existed. Um, you know, an endemic sports brand such as Gatorade is, is just unbelievable, and you actually see your work in the products on every Saturday and Sunday, if you're watching college football or college basketball, if you're watching NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, MLS, the, the list goes on and on. You see your products out there. You see the athletes using and um, you know using the products and helping them fuel their performance. So it's definitely a dream come true for sure. And we're going to open the, the floor up here in a minute. i got about two more questions. Who's ever next, tell us in the chat or raise your hand and I'll get you on deck. So if you're ready, Tell us when you're ready, and I'll put you on deck. Um, here's what's interesting to me. Uh, you guys bring in $3 billion in sales every year. Uh, I mean, that's some good money. Uh, but recently, you've changed your philosophy a little bit. Uh, Gatorade used to put about 90% of their marketing dollars in TV, Super Bowl ads. You're now shifting 30% to digital. What did you see, and why is this more important for you all now? Wow, Chris, you've done your research. Got to do research, man. That's what journalists do. And he's having a little bit of problem with his wife or his technical issues. He'll come right back on. But what's fascinating to me is what I read, and he'll, he, when he comes back on, we'll talk about this, is they're such a big brand. It's easy to put money into TV, easy to do it that way, because that's a mass market. It's a way to, to get a big audience. But yet they're trying to get one-to-one -one marketing. They're realizing the power of social media to me, that's pretty impressive. And once he comes back on, we'll have him talk about that. But you would think of a brand like Gatorade, more traditional, more of a, a brand that just doesn't really dive into the new technology, uh, like social media, they were the first ones to create a command center. Did you all know that? I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Kempton, did you know that? Yeah. In fact, my question uh, for John is uh, about the command center. They start, I think they're the pioneering people who started command center in uh, 2010 yep. and I want to know what what new updates what the news get new gadgets and software that they have in the Absolutely. new command center so John we were Sorry, just back, for a minute. Guys. no problem I'm I was good now. no problem I was filling in the time basically we can reiterate the question again 90% uh, of it used to go into TV 30% now digital to me that's impressive with a brand that was making so much money they had so much history and did pretty well, but y'all are uh, realizing the times are changing. Yeah, absolutely. And well, I'm impressed with the research that you've uh, done on the organization. It's really impressive. But that's what I do. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You I didn't think, do it in college. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I need think, to study in college. Absolutely. I think you know when we realized our core consumer, which are elite athletes between the ages of 13 and 17 years old they're engaging so much in the digital space. So we want to go where the athletes are, where our core target is. We've noticed that a lot of our core target isn't necessarily watching as much TV or with DVR or things of that nature, they may breeze through some of the ads. And so what better way to kind of communicate directly with our core consumers by going to the digital space and going in through our social media and through digital advertising. So it's, it's something that we realize and understand and want to go to where our target is and this is a way to do it. And if anybody wants to ask questions on Twitter, we're at SSE Show hashtag on Twitter. You can ask a question there as well or follow along. Uh, Kempton's going to have a question in a minute, but following along that, when you're saying, uh, y'all were the first and uh, Dell gets a lot of credit for that because we're from Texas to doing a command center. 
But technically, Dell, sorry, Gatorade was first with the command center. Uh, tell me how cool that is to have a command center. Have you been in it, and what's it all about? Oh, I walk past it every day, hang out in there. We have a great group of folks that, that sit in that room and monitor what's going on, on online. So we have a, you know, a full team of people, and uh, part of me even thought about doing the chat from there. I thought that would have been really oh, cool. But that would have been awesome. I know. I know. I had to get home to my baby, so... Uh, but but it's it's really good. We we definitely have a full team that monitors the chatter. We'll kind of look for certain words that are being brought up, and if there's certain conversations that are going on, we'll we'll definitely you know interact with the, the athletes. If there's athletes that have questions about what they should be doing to help their training, if they need some type of motivation, those types of things, we definitely want to engage those our consumers and, and give them that direct access and help them out in any way we can. Next time we pay for a babysitter and you do the <laughs> hangout from the command center. And just for you folks out there, especially Google and everybody, this is Gatorade's John Schumacher's first ever Google hangout. We always seem to introduce people to this. Absolutely. And, and you know what? I was very hesitant to join Google Plus, too. And so you, you definitely uh, talked me into it. And it's a really great interactive piece. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself for not joining sooner. So this is awesome. That's all right. We get uh, one cent for every person we bring on, so we're now oh, making some money. That's Kempton, great. you had a question. Yes, uh, John. It's a follow-up uh, to Chris' question. Um, so you, the command center started in 2010, right? I want to know what kind of new software, hardware, and the team, the, the team size has grown since uh, the, the beginning of the command center two, about two years ago. So, unfortunately, I don't know all the details of the software in there. I mean, we definitely have a um, interface where, again, we track certain words, and it kind of, like, there's a cool little screen in, in the, uh, there's, like, several, like, five or six flat screens that are in there, and they track social chatter. So we have um, any type of uh, mentions of Gatorade or, or sports nutrition or sports fuel, um, energy, any type of catch words, we'll definitely you know, track that conversation and see what's going on. And if we feel like we need to respond, we'll definitely respond. So maybe I'll follow up, uh, you know, follow me on Twitter and I'll ask the group to uh, give me some more insights in regards to the exact software that they use. But mm -hmm. we definitely are on Facebook and Twitter and we're constantly trying to interact and, and uh, connect with our core consumers. And there are some really fancy things, but I don't know all of it. So I No problem, man. Yeah, and you're great like you on know. social media. That's how me and you interacted, and I appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, uh, you talked about how you uh, are part of, in a way, human resources. You're helping younger kids and their, uh, how to get in this stuff. Derek has a question on, uh, on how to start a career in this field. Go ahead, Derek. Hi, John. Uh, Derek Bennett. I'm, I'm a senior at UMass. Um, basically, I work on the agency side of sponsorship right now for Nelligan Sports Marketing. We represent UMass Athletics. Uh, so I'm wondering how to really get onto the other side of the equation, you know, get over to the corporate side. I know it doesn't happen right away. So what do you suggest as, as a, a couple of starting jobs to get into that, that side of the equation? Well, absolutely, uh, Derek. I, I think first and foremost, UMass Sports Management, that's the home and, and the founder, you know, of sports management. So that's very impressive to be going to a school such as that. So a big fan of that that school. And you're definitely starting off on the on the right track. And then, you know, working for Nelligan Sports Marketing, actually in my previous role in the sports marketing group at Gatorade, I worked with several different Nelligan Sports Marketing representatives, you know, negotiating contracts for like Louisville University, yep. um, as well as the uh, Florida Citrus Sports so for the Citrus oh, yeah. Bowl and the uh, Capital One Bowl and the Russell Athletic Bowl. So definitely had that interaction. And actually, that's one of the ways where you can kind of try to make that transition. So just to give you a little background on myself, so went to college, uh, Wittenberg University, small liberal arts school, uh, did some work at a man. This thing is blowing up. He's, uh, he's gotten so popular that uh, his Wi-Fi is going nuts here. Well, we can, we'll keep talking. Well, he'll come back on. He's popped on a few times. Now, this has happened before. We're going to cut him some slack because this happened with our Olympic athlete, uh, when he called in from the Olympic Village, he dropped out about 20 times, but he was persistent. He kept coming back and back. So let's see if Gatorade, if Gatorade has that type of persistence, has that type of momentum to come back. I think they do. Charles, you're probably going to have to kick him out again because all the slots are filled. 
and we'll move along with that. Derek, did he answer your question? Yeah, I mean, he certainly was beginning to before he cut out, but yeah, he was right on track. <laughs> There Especially he that, he, that he gave you a kudos for what, yeah. uh, what school you're at. Yeah, that so, was great. John, I give Sorry, you kudos, sorry, sorry man. I don't hey. know what's going on with the internet. I got direct connection into my box. so hopefully Maybe we'll maybe out. you've got a million views tonight watching this show. Man. It's, it's great. But sorry, I think it's so, gotten so popular. Yeah, but I'll get back to that. So I went to you know college, Wittenberg University, degree in business. Uh, worked at the Ohio State University in their sponsorship department. Small world. Actually, my boss that I reported into, his name is Jim Smith, who's now the current CMO of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, and, and then I decided I wanted to get my master's in business and wanted to go somewhere different. And there was a sports business program down at Florida Atlantic University that I attended. I uh, really enjoyed that program because it forced me to work full time and then go to school at night. So while I was, uh, appreciate the, the love, Chris. Oh, I didn't know I was doing that. I'm sorry. I didn't, <laughs> no, I didn't no realize worries. that that was camera ready there. Um, so I basically took the um, work full time for the Miami Dolphins and went to school at night. So got hands-on sports experience and then worked at, and went to school at night. Then I got a job at the Orlando Magic and then went back to the Miami Dolphins and then started with Gatorade. So I tell you that background because I had interaction with brands like Gatorade and Anheuser-Busch and things of that nature. So I worked you know, hand in hand with those corporations and got a better understanding of how they did business, how they did sports marketing. And just based on my work ethic and my background, Gatorade actually recruited me. The person that I replaced had worked for the company for 17 years and kind of recommended me to, uh, you know, for the position, went through the inter interview process and got the opportunity. So I tell you there's there's different ways you can get in, but I think you're headed in the right direction working for an organization like Nelligan Sports Marketing. Really try to connect with your current partners and try to get a better understanding of what their business objectives are and what they're trying to accomplish from a sports perspective. And then you never know, you could always get the call to, you know, replace the person that you work with directly. Another opportunity too if you don't have your masters in business, especially if you really want to focus on like a CPG brand or a Fortune five hundred company going to get your MBA is definitely critical. So people say, mm -hmm. how do you get with Gatorade? We, we specifically recruit Gatorade, Quaker, Tropicana recruits out of MBA programs at the University of huh. Michigan, Northwestern, and also the University of Chicago. So I always tell people you want to work for Gatorade, you don't have your MBA, go to one of those schools, your percentage, it, you know, you're <laughs> getting with PepsiCo in Chicago are a lot better because they do recruit directly there. But uh, you could also get on the agency side or do what I did. I worked on the team side and was recruited into Gatorade from there. That's a good little background going through the teams and interesting. And uh, Miguel, I have a question here, but I want to kind of follow up on that, what you're talking about. Uh, what do you love so much about sports marketing? It sounds like you've always been in it. What are you passionate about? What intrigues you and why is it creative? Well, I grew up as an athlete. So, you know, playing football, basketball, soccer, and, and it was interesting that, you know, I stopped growing after a certain, you know, age. So I was about 5'10", and that was it. And I'm like, okay, I love basketball, but there's no way in the world I'm going to play in the NBA. L enjoy playing football, but I'm not going to play in the pro. So I always used to say, well, I'm going to own a team, or I'm going to work behind the scenes. And I was very fortunate, too, growing up. My father is um, very involved at the Ohio State University. He's actually on the board of trustees there. So I always had the opportunity as a child to go to, like, a lot of the bowl games. So it was very interesting how things came full circle. So I used to go to like the Capital One Bowl and the Outback Bowl and the Gator Bowl, you know, with my father, just kind of seeing how things happen across, <clears throat> you know, behind the scenes. And then fast forward, you know, 20 years later, I'm negotiating deals on behalf of Gatorade with those same bowls. So it's, it's very, cool. very interesting to, you know, have those different experiences. And it's, it's very um you know, I'm very thankful for those opportunities. And you never know, you know, so anyone that has kids or growing up, you never know the exposure that you give your child could help them, you know, be who they are, you know, 20, 30 years down the road. Absolutely. Miguel, you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? And John, Oh, by the way, Miguel used to be on our show all the time <laughs> and been around in about six months. And you show up, John. Gatorade and all that, and he comes back. He's like, oh, I've been wanting to come back. Baloney, you came I'm back right. for John and Gatorade. Okay, go ahead. Love it. All right, John, John I have a question. Uh, with the Game of the Century coming up uh, in January on uh, uh, Alabama and Notre Dame, um, is Gatorade going to be looking at anything metric-wise? And what type of uh, feedback do you guys get 
on the college landscape from uh, college football as a whole, whether it's Twitter or Facebook? Well, absolutely, and it's interesting. In my old role in sports marketing, I actually did our BCS agreement, so we will have full sideline exposure on both sidelines, and we'll have some um, added value that we're actually our uh, consumer engagement team is working on as well. Um, we have a relationship with Trent Richardson. Um, he's a part of our Everything to Prove uh, branded entertainment show. Um, I could talk a little bit more about that, but he's going to do some social media stuff as well, doing some posts, some sideline tweets um, during That's the cool. game as well. Um, so we're, we're and then we'll obviously have media running throughout all the BCS games as well. Um, really ramping up and you know getting ready for the new 2013 year and, and really you know getting people encouraged and fired up and really showcasing the fact that these two teams have worked very hard um, throughout the season. Notre Dame, we have a great relationship with Notre Dame and a longstanding partnership with that university. I actually did our Alabama deal a couple of years ago, so believe it or not, it, the deal got signed right before Coach Saban's first season. And then before you know it, I look like a rock star because the ah, team is like killing it right now. And uh, and, and we'll, definitely Gatorade will take the credit for that too for all the success going on down in Alabama. But they're they're a great group, a great university, and we're we're excited to have both of those teams um, in the game. But we'll definitely be involved from a social media standpoint as well. Um, again, Trent Richardson doing some tweets. We'll be tweeting as well. Um, really just to get excited about this great game that's gonna gonna happen in uh, January. And what's cool is you just said it, uh, y'all are going to be part of the game, and I love the quote that I read in the article saying, why advertise in the Super Bowl when the players on the field are actually drinking Gatorade? Absolutely. Y'all are always part of the field. So Absolutely. let's go to that history. Uh, I'll never forget it. I was a Dallas Cowboys fan growing up, and the New York Giants would always beat us because of Parcells, and the first Super Bowl he won, something happened. Tell us the history on the Gatorade dunk. So, you know, the, the history is definitely, um, you know, out there. Darren Ravel, who is a friend of Gatorade and a supporter of Gatorade, has done several stories on the Gatorade dunk. You know, there's an official and an unofficial story. Like some people would say that it actually started here in Chicago by the Chicago Bears, but ah, it was made so famous. So basically the Gatorade dunk, as Miguel was saying. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it, it's so, but who made it famous was the – um, New York Giants and Harry Carson and I had yes. the opportunity to work and, and, and speak with Harry directly and just hear his story of how he you know decided to do the dunk it's, it's you know there's been several kind of ESPN specials and things of that nature on the internet where he talks about it but he really just it's funny he said he wanted to dunk him because coach Parcells was so hard on him and he just wanted to get him back so what better way than to you know, give them, a, you know, dump them with a bunch of Gatorade. And then it's turned into a, ce um, a celebratory um, occasion to really showcase and really show how proud, you know, these guys, these athletes work their tails off, you know, in the off season and, and leading up to in training camp and things of that nature. So what better way to kind of cap off a great season with a nice ice cold Gatorade bath? That's amazing, though, because at the time he was doing it to get him back, he probably didn't realize that uh, it would become one of the legendary Super Bowl uh, winning uh, championship things to do. Absolutely. And then the name, the name Gatorade. People don't realize where it came from. Tell us about that. Oh, absolutely. So it was born um, and developed on the campus of the University of Florida, Go Gators. Um, and it, it definitely, it, it, this is really true to how things are developed. I mean, and anyone that's in the innovation business or developing products, the first and foremost, you need to figure out what's the need. You know, is, is there a need? Is there someone that um, wants or needs something? And so Dr. K, Robert Cade, who I actually had the pleasure of meeting before he passed away, there was a ceremony down at the University of Florida, a dedication ceremony, uh, where they dedicated something to Gatorade and, and spoke and met with him, and he actually passed away three years later. So I was actually honored and privileged to meet Dr. K. But he saw that these athletes were getting tired quickly, they were sweating, they were you know, getting fatigued and developed the Gatorade um, on on the campus of the University of Florida, and then Stokely Van Campen um, partnered with them, and then it was acquired by Quaker, and then it was acquired by um, PepsiCo about almost eight nine years ago now. So, it's wow. a, it's a great story. 
Okay. Uh, a few more questions. We only got about five more minutes, folks. John, you've been very patient. And, and I can only... stay longer too because I know I dropped off a couple of times, so I'm having a good time. So if you want to do an extended show, I'm overtime with Gatorade. Gatorade yeah. always goes overtime, man. Absolutely. Uh, I know that um, Robert had a question. Robert Hanlon, go ahead. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, John, just want to thank you for coming on. Uh, another UMass student that I actually work with, uh, Derek and Nelligan, and um, gotten some experience with the Devils over the summer. Kind of saw their own take on uh, mission control as well over there. But my question was just um, before, before the show, I looked at your LinkedIn, just trying to see you know how you got where you were. I was wondering if you could touch upon how um, – how your positions in client services kind of compared to what you did now and you know what you like with the different positions. I'm kind of interested because I think I might want to get into a position like yours one day. So sure. you just touch upon that a little bit, the comparison between the two different yeah. positions. It's actually very interesting because on the client services sponsorship activation side, so you're working directly with the corporate partners. So you're on the other side of the table. You're actually the good guy because there's actually a salesperson that actually sells the deal and then it gets taken over by you and you kind of make sure the deal is fulfilled and you develop marketing plans and you pr provide different insights and things of that nature to that partner to help them grow their business. Because at the end of the day, you have to really take a step back and say, why do people sponsor sports or why do people pay for sponsorships? It's to grow their business. Like there, It would make no sense for us to do any type of sponsorship deal if it's not going to give us brand exposure or some type of a consumer experience or also help us with our customer relations. And what I mean by customer relations, like your Walmart, Sam Clubs, Costco's, things of that nature. So it's really critical and important to make sure that on the client side, you want to deliver something of value, a return on their investment or return on, or ROE, what I call return on ego. Uh, that's another. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've know, never and, heard that before. Yeah, that's, like a, that. that's a good one. Yeah, ROE. Return on someone's ego because even on the sales side or even on the sponsorship side, uh, you know, sitting not necessarily on the sponsor, but I'm um, sorry, on the brand side, but on the sponsor side, you know, some people just do deals just because they want to be affiliated with sports. They want to go on the sidelines and hang out or they want to sit in the suites. But you got to kind of gauge people's motivations and things of that nature and kind of figure out. A best package for for that person so really I just stayed close and really was a student of the game and when I mean student of the game student of sports marketing so I might have been client services for the Miami Dolphins but I was looking to see what was going on in the NBA was going on in the MLB was going on in the college landscape I mean the sports business journal is like the Wall Street Journal for sports I read that thing religiously every morning the morning buzz the really the, 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 the middle piece and then the closing bell I even read the global thing that comes out at night now so I really comb that read see what's best practices and if you follow me on Twitter you'll see me posting certain links and stories of, of you know professional development how to better yourself and, and all those things but to get back huh. to your question that experience helped me and it actually was a competitive advantage for a brand like Gatorade because now I was on one side of the table, they flipped me on the other side. So now I knew all the inter you know, how things worked on the team side. I knew what assets were available. I knew how to navigate through the system a lot better and to get a lot of things done. And, and believe it or not, the teams appreciated it too. So I was able to get a lot of added value or a lot of different things out of our deals because they knew I was from them. So it was, it's a kind of like a win-win situation where, yes, I used the knowledge that I learned on the client services side to help benefit Gatorade, but also I benefited the clients or the team side by knowing not to ask for certain things or to try to develop, you know, activations that I know in no way in the world it would work. Because you'd be surprised on the client side, you know, you would hear some of the requests that you would get and you would say, really? Is this person really asking this? Like, one funny story, I won't name the sponsor that I was <laughs> working with, but they um, called me frantically and said, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Schumann, I need. I have to ask you a question. It said, you know, we're planning out our, our season, and you know, we, we just can't figure out what what this team name is. Where where is this team from? And I said, oh, tell me what the team is. And it says Idol. I said, excuse me. He said, <laughs> you know, the team Idol. I D L E. Wow, that's awesome. I, I said, oh, um, that means that, or actually. That that was for one one sponsor. Another sponsor, even a different so, one, so, said so B B Y. People don't understand. Idol means bye week for some right. people. <laughs> bye, yeah. So that was like uh, that. There's no game that week, and I'm like <laughs> so confused. But they obviously weren't a brand that was or a sponsor that was really really well versed in sports. And so 
you know, educating them and helping them understand is something that uh, I, I did as well. But just to get you know close the loop on that, it, it's really interesting how a lot of people think they know about sports, but they really don't. So if you could serve as that expert for that brand that brand will definitely see your value and who knows maybe ask you to come work for them down the road I've seen it happen quite a bit interesting interesting yeah that seems to be happening a lot especially for journalists uh, like us that uh, now that people need content so a lot of brands are wanting content marketing so all of a sudden journalists will become valuable again Monica uh, you had a question uh, yeah um, I just wondered um, you know being the brand manager and all um, obviously, your sofa has done the sports marketing side of it, but um, I actually, I've had a lot of doctors actually, um, like, I have a lot of health issues, and uh, many doctors actually recommend Gatorade to me, and have done so for many years for oh. not just staying hydrated, but um, they think that you have a very healthy product, um, you know, not just as a sports drink, and I wonder, so if you ever take advantage of that aspect when you're marketing it? Um, unfortunately, we don't. We definitely appreciate the recommendations that we get from, well, we definitely have an influencer program, so we really focus on coaches and athletic trainers and strength coaches. Again, we, we're, we're an athletic sports drink, so our main kind of focus is at the athletes, but definitely it's kind of an aspirational type of strategy. So it's kind of like if it's good enough for these great athletes, it could also help others. I mean, my wife actually drinks it as well to kind of help her when she's not feeling well, or she, you know, we have a one year old twin boys at home. So you could imagine the, uh, oh amount my of energy, the amount of energy that uh, she exerts throughout the day. And sometimes she doesn't have necessarily time to eat and she definitely uses Gatorade to kind of help her get through her, through her day. But it's definitely formulated to help. It obviously replenishes, you know, um, the, the electrolytes that are in your body. It also helps you, you know, with, with the carbohydrates that are in there. It helps you, just gives you energy to kind of function. So definitely it's recommended and it's helpful, but I don't think we would necessarily go in the direction of a full marketing campaign around that because, you know, we were born on the, on the football field and in the sports realm, and I think it's worked for us for over 40-plus years, so I don't think we'll mess with that. Monica, right. great. I like the different perspective, though, Monica. Great point. Uh, right. Monica's a long-time uh, hangout person in Google+. Plus. I just noticed because it's like, um, you know, a lot of nutritionists, is, they are always saying, like, do you know that Gatorade is, like, really good with, the, especially when they mention electrolytes, and so, like, it's a... <laughs> They'll even, you know, give it to me when I'm hospitalized and I'm I've been dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So I was just curious that if if you guys knew that. Um, that That's a great story. Like, yeah, we absolutely know, it and we definitely appreciate it. And we reach out. We have, you know, our influencer marketing team has great relationships with a lot of dietitians and nutritionists and and, and doctors and things of that nature. And I, and again, a lot of the people, like a lot of the athletic trainers, are medically trained, so they're able to. Um, you know, understand the benefits, and it definitely trickles through. We, you know, we have great relationships with a lot of the team doctors and, and all that, and so they definitely understand the benefits, and we definitely, you know, appreciate it. And, and it also makes us feel good, too. Obviously, we're focused on the athletes, but it also makes you feel good that we're just helping people in general. That's awesome. Too. That's fantastic. Kempton, we got a few more questions, folks. He's going overtime here. Kempton, go ahead. As long as you need me. Yeah. yeah. yeah you'll so, need Gatorade, dude, with twins. Yeah. I got... I got seven-year-old twins. Oh wow! And then a four-year-old, oh, and then wow. a two-year-old. I am you can make it after twins, man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Kempton, go ahead. All right. So, uh, John, uh, under um, the former uh, president of Gatorade, uh, sorry, Sarah's uh, leadership, she made a few critical and important changes and uh, took different actions. So, I want to ask you. Um, the, under the new president, what are some of the new uh, and current challenges that you guys are trying to, uh, I guess, push uh, Gatorade up even even uh, <laughs> to the next level? Sure. So Sarah came in and did a fabulous job leading the Gatorade brand into you know the direction that we're heading. I mean, your task as a business leader to grow a business and it's very challenging and so our business was basically your your everyday Gatorade um, you know liquid beverage and so we worked frantically to um, 
figure out what's the next thing that athletes are looking for. And, you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves in, we have an f- unbelievable consumer insights team that really does a lot of great consumer insights work to really talk to athletes to figure out what it is that they need to help them, you know, get through their um, athletic performance. And one th- a couple of things we found were that a lot of athletes were just coming to practice and coming to games with nothing to eat or they're not really hydrated, they're just kind of just showing up. And obviously the Gatorade's there for when they're practicing or during the games, but they're not doing anything really before and they're not doing anything after. And so those insights kind of turned into what our Prime and Recover products are. So our Prime products are kind of our energy-related products to give you that extra boost to uh, get started and and get, get your game started on the right track and get started strong. Um, and it's not your typical energy products that are out there. I won't mention any of, any of their names, but our products are a little different. They're non-caffeinated. They're, they're filled with carbohydrates, and because carbohydrates is really what, from in an athletic state, will help you kind of get through and get you energized. So our products, we have the Prime Energy Chews and our Prime um, Energy Drink, uh, Sports Energy Drink, that that, that helps those athletes kind of get ready. So they're ready and, and set to go when they go into their game or their practice. And then our after products, which are recovery products, are more protein-based because you need the protein to kind of help repair your muscles. And so we have our Gatorade Recover Shake um, and, our, and our Gatorade Thirst Quencher, which is a kind of a Gatorade with protein in it to kind of help jumpstart your, um, your uh, recovery process. And so developing those two need states as well as kind of rebranding the brand um, you know, with the, lo- the logo change going from the Gatorade to the G to the G series, um, you know, that's definitely, you know, someone coming in with a mega brand such as Gatorade to make those amount of changes is, is definitely phenomenal. And, you know, we were definitely honored and pri- I was honored and privileged to kind of be a part of that, that process. And it really helped me. It was a great learning for me. It helped me understand that, you know, if I ever have the opportunity to be a leader of a business or an organization, you sometimes have to do things differently. Um, to think differently and to always kind of look at consumer insights or look at what the people want and develop something that will help them and obviously turn that into a profitable business. So it, the, her work and her leadership has led us to um, these two great needs states with great opportunities and great um, uh, headway for our business. And our new president, um, Brett O'Brien, who came from the Mountain Dew brand, uh, actually we had a town hall with him last week he or two weeks ago, and he's transitioning over. Uh, from Purchase New York. So he hasn't officially, I mean, he started, but he hasn't been in the office just yet. And we're kind of just wrapping up 2012 and and, uh, sharing out our 2013 strategy. And we're kind of ready to rock and roll for 2013. And he's excited and we're excited to have him. We're fired up. I mean, any guy that can lead a brand such as Mountain Dew and do a deal with one of my favorite rappers, Lil Wayne, is is all right. (laughs) There you go. Awesome. All right. Everybody's asked a question except Jason. Last question, and then we'll wrap it up. Jason, go ahead. Hey, John. Thanks for your time tonight. Um, I work in the NASCAR industry and actually work with Octagon Sports Marketing. Um, I just wanted to ask and, and see how what your thoughts were on the on NASCAR sponsorship or Gatorade sponsorship of the NASCAR world. Um, how successful has that been for you guys, and what do you see the future of that being? I know you currently have some sponsorships, some of the tracks and drivers, but kind of where do you see that going in the future? Sure. I mean, NASCAR, there, there's definitely a, fa- a a very passionate fan base around NASCAR. I've had the pleasure of going to a couple of Daytona 500s and to actually experience that e- those events is, is unbelievable. And, and re- we understand that NASCAR drivers are athletes. I mean, it gets hot in those cars oh, yeah. and you're driving round and round and round. And so it, you definitely need something to kind of keep you hydrated. Um, when, when you're driving, and, and I think you know, we, we definitely um, are, are looking to continue our relationship with NASCAR. I don't handle the NASCAR relationship directly, and I didn't in my previous role in sports marketing. But it's definitely something like you know, we're, we're, we have a relationship with Jimmy Johnson, who is fabulous, and uh, Matt Kenseth. We have partnerships with him, and then we also sponsor a couple of tracks. We also use NASCAR to um, for customer relationships. I kind of mentioned that before with our retail partners. And so we'll do some consumer engagement and retail activation partnerships, or we'll host some partners, um, you know, at NASCAR because they are NASCAR fans. So it may be more of a hospitality play as well, but also the branding of the the victory lanes and things of that nature. It's definitely um, an important part of the um, the sports landscape, and we want to continue to be a part of it and, and help to uh, 
fuel athletes their bodies, and obviously they have different fuel for their cars. So uh, we're, we're, we're definitely working on um, continuing some of those relationships. We're evaluating um, year by year all of our partnerships, but NASCAR is something that we're definitely um, not, um, you know, moving away from. Again, you can't walk away from some a great uh partner like Jimmy Johnson and obviously the relationships we have and definitely our customers enjoy that partnership so we definitely uh, appreciate being partners with uh, NASCAR. Awesome. I want to say thanks to everybody coming on. Derek, thank you. Jason Hall, thank you for coming on. Kempton, first time. Kempton only goes to Fox <laughs> LA, all the celebrities and he only came on <laughs> our show first time ever. Keith Knox tweeted uh, if y'all want to catch up on the Twitter feed, you can go do that. Please retweet. We get we want to get John about a million impressions tonight. Go to SSC Show. Monica, thank you. Miguel even came back. How about that, Robert Hanlon? Best producer around Charles and John. First time ever, man. You did a great job. Really appreciate you coming on. And, and you do a fantastic job explaining what Gatorade is all about. Uh, you will be getting a raise from Gatorade after this airs um, because you did a fantastic job. And if not... You tell them to call me. Where are the twins right now? Are they sleeping? They are they're sound asleep. We put them to bed about uh, 7.30 uh, Central Time and uh, just enjoying uh, chatting with you guys. Again, I really appreciate I had no idea about this show. This is awesome. We definitely will come back and uh, you know check you guys out. Uh, appreciate the uh, support and uh, love the UMass love. Try to get some more of your students out there to kind of be a part of this stuff and show some love uh, to maybe get some other students out there because I think this is a great opportunity for people to learn and, and talk and, and love these types of opportunities. So keep up the great work, and I'll be tweeting pretty crazy about this as well. And I, if I can help you get more guests or different guests, uh, let me know. Yeah, you said uh, the former president. Bring her on next. We'll get her on in 2013. I'll try, I'd like I'll to hear kind of the background on what you did and stuff. And uh, you did fantastic, and you were brave, man. You came out. You came out. Very good. Yeah, appreciate yeah, it. Good job. Applause on that. Sorry for the technical difficulties, too, but I'll figure that 